<laughs> Hello? Can you walk? You people hear me? Hello, welcome to Cinema Lounge, where we sit back, relax, and just warm up our vocals a little bit. And uh, to continue from last time, James is going to continue on with his Mad Magazine list. The top 50 worst things about about movies. Dated or... again from? Huh? Dated again from? Dated from August 2003. As is evidenced by our next, uh, by our next entry here, actually, um, yeah, we did one through ten before. Now we're going to go through eleven to twenty. Uh, we've uh, so far we bashed Martin Scorsese, Kevin Smith, and every big screen TV show adaptation ever made. Um, oh, and Sandra Bullock. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, here, oh, here's one that's, here's one that's dated, number 11. Oh, hey, hardcore one. Uh, he has a webcam. Ah, there we go. Yeah. He's not a Charlie Brown character. Uh -huh. Oh, I look like one. <laughs> you do! <laughs> I actually kind of do, actually. Four, same hair. <gasps> Good grief. <laughs> uh, the hardcore one is in. Okay, number 11. <clears throat> the ever smug, size to match his ego, blowhard Michael Moore, whose lunatic leftist rantings almost make us nostalgic for the days of Senator Joe McCarthy's Hollywood blacklist. I've never watched Michael Moore's films, his documentaries. I yeah. Think I saw the, what was his popular one again? I think it was Fahrenheit 9 11. Yeah, I think I've seen one of them. I think, like, it was the that? last. I, I think know. the last time I saw it, saw his uh, documentary was Bowling for Columbine, maybe. Oh, that's that. That is one of them, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was this was right after that. So, mm -hmm. like I said, this is dated a bit. It's uh, obvious. I think you might have seen Fahrenheit 9/11. Is that the one where he brings in money to Wall Street? That's, when he has like his big money bag or something. That's something or, else. That's a different one. I can't remember. Like the he, no, I think he goes trick or treating at Wall Street. I think so. I don't know. It, it, he's a mixed bag. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Number 12. The guaranteed good press any desperate director of a bad film can buy from Harry Knowles of com for the price of an advanced screening and a large cheese trough from the Swiss colony. Wait. What? What? Isn't that the whole... Shall I repeat that? Shall I repeat that? Sure. Yeah, that was kind of long. <laughs> yeah, drop the back. Okay. Let me move my gloves out of the way of my microphone. Why do you? Okay, I'm not going to ask. Surgical gloves, props. Okay. Who, who are you trying to kill? Fox. <laughs> Dexter. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Again. The guaranteed good press any desperate director of a bad film can buy from Harry Knowles of AinItCoolNews.com for the price of an advanced screening in a large cheese trough from the Swiss colony. Oh, so basically if you need good press, just go to Ain't it Cool News. What he's saying is, if you need good press, buy off a critic. Uh, oh, that's kind of... I'm not sure if they still do that. Oh, I'm sure. So. Mm, mm. Maybe they get some like free free tickets or something. You know, just bring a just bring a friend. Okay, here here's one that's going to be a little bit controversial. That's Number my thirteen. Kind of thing. Huh? It's my kind of thing. Okay. Number thirteen. Each year's spate of Lorne Michaels produced films based on skits that Saturday Night Live ran into the ground at least three years prior. Hmm. Who's Lorne Michael again? The producer of Saturday Night Live, and these are some of the movies he's produced. 
Uh, Coneheads. Coneheads, Wings World. Ladies Man. Superstar. Mm -hmm. What's that, that one? It's Pat. Yeah, it's Pat. Oh, it's oh. Pat, yeah. Uh, Ten I've, minutes. Been compared to, I've been compared to It's Pat once, actually. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, you have. <laughs> that's that's right. Oh god, that's right. I have. Yes, I remember that one. I'm not that fat. Well, no, it's actually no. I remember it was a mix of it's Pat and John Lasseter. Yep, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah, except there's a problem. Except there's a problem with this. Um, apparently, the Coneheads in Wayne's World were good movies. Yeah, that's true. It's, yeah, now they got Coneheads back for uh, those um, State Farm commercials, which are really good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. a good neighbor, State Farm is there in France. <laughs> this pleases me. <laughs> I, I, I don't... We don't get those yet. Like, we do get State Farm commercials, but we didn't get the Coneheads one. Uh, oh, drat. Well, we'll just have to show you later, won't we? Yes, yeah. we shall. <laughs> Educate him. Okay. Number 14, glowing reviews for horrible films by nobody film critics from unheard of publications written solely for the novelty of seeing their names in highly visible nationwide ad campaigns. That oh, and, sounds like uh, something I would do. <laughs> and for the oh, picture gosh. here, we have this. Oh, yes, I know those... how... It's kind of like if you want to get noticed on Metacritic or Rotten Tomatoes, you just put a glowing review on it so that yours can go on top. Yeah, sort of I'm... like how uh, Armand White got attention by doing some shitty reviews. Who was that? And Armand White. He was like a troll critic, and he's like one. Of, he, he made like a negative review of Toy Story Three, so that it was for stupid people. Oh. And Roger, it... and, and Roger Ebert. Know. Roger Ebert called him out for that. Hmm. Good. Oh, okay. People will kind of um, try to draw negative attention to themselves because yeah. it doesn't really affect them. They just want the attention regardless of it's ne like if it's negative or not. They've actually, they've, actually, so they've, they've actually got like a system on Yelp where if somebody does like a, uh, like a um, fake negative review or something, they get rid of it. And uh, there was, uh, I was listening to the radio today, and uh, they had one guy who said it was a scam because uh, he had heard that a restaurant was selling uh, whale meat. And when he heard about that, he felt disgusted and said, oh, this restaurant sells whale meat, and apparently it got deleted. It <laughs> Whale meat. Do people whale? even use it? This it's... actually reminds me, oh, sorry. It's blubbery. It's warm. I saw that. I, I um I watch uh, an idiot abroad. I don't know if you know what that is, no. but one of the episodes, the guy Carl, he went to Alaska and he ate whale meat, and it was gross. It was not bad because he usually hates all the food he eats. <laughs> not really, but it wasn't that bad. I'm wondering. Hmm. I I'm actually pretty curious. Does anybody actually use Yelp? Like mm -hmm. as legit, like to mm -hmm. like no. Oh, if... you I'll look at like Google reviews or something. Some people do use Yelp, but not everybody. Uh -oh. Okay, number fifteen. Mo young moviegoers today don't realize that there was a time very long ago when the words National Lampoon preceding a movie's title was actually a good sign. <laughs> oh, I, oh yeah, all those okay. stinkers. Oh. But how how young? Um, my age, or probably, well, that was a... well, well, think your age, think your age only, only 12 years ago when this was published. Oh. We're oh. talking American, we're talking American Pie here. Oh, I see. No, the no, no, wait, American Pie wasn't National Lampoon. No, the wasn't knock just, of, uh, no, like... National Lampoon is like vacation... Uh, animal, animal, House. animal House, Senior animal Trip, House. that kind of stuff. Okay, National Lampoon from the National Lampoon movies, though. Like, okay, Van Wilder and The Rise of Taj. Those were movies that were coming out yes. around this time, yeah. which I believe they're probably referring to. 
Probably. No offense to Ryan Reynolds. There's, there's other ones in the bunch that are not worthy to talk about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, at well, at least, uh, at, at least, um... It, the name's just gone downhill since they first started. Well, at least Van Wilder gave us something very clever to do with your dog. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, the less said, the better. Um, 16. Movie theaters concessions growing trend of offering foods that are difficult enough to eat neatly while seated comfortably at a table with proper silverware and adequate lighting, let alone trying to chow down in a cramped space in the dark with food on your lap and a plastic spork. Well, not just that. They're, like, super expensive now. Like, shit. Yeah, well, who, yeah, who would buy that now? I mean, that's yeah. in 2003, of course, so well, back then. Well, unless you're in, like, those luxury cinemas. Oh. Actually, because, no joke, I've actually been to a cinema where they even offer wine during yeah. the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's some places that, that serve... Them. That sounds fancy. They serve beer in some of them, too. So that there's some really nice cinemas out there. And I remember that was during the time I remember seeing that ad before going to see home. So they put an advertise to it and it was like I, I was worried honestly. You watch a movie yeah. in theaters while you're getting drunk. That'd be fun. Yeah, and it, if your folks need a beer before watching this, yeah. <laughs> it would help me go through a lot of bad movies actually. <laughs> Oh, this Fantastic Four movie. I can't take it anymore. It's like when the nostalgia critic in his one review when he did that the one Titanic one, he's like pulls out this giant flask Jager. before the magic dog. I, re- yeah. I remember when he when he was Jager reviewing Meister. I remember when he was reviewing Stephen King's It. He was taking shot yeah, at this really it's strong the drinking movie. game. Why did he do that? Because he's a very stupid cat. <laughs> I don't know, I think Tim Curry's hilarious in this movie. Ha, Any- ha, ha. Anyways. I think I talked about a drinking game between the Cinema Royale cast with Mike once. Yeah, she has mentioned that to me. <laughs> Take a sh- okay. God. Okay, number 17. Oh, here, here's the topical one from stuff we've done before. There are talented screenwriters crafting countless original, worthy, and compelling scripts each year. None of which get produced to instead make room for the mul- at the multiplex for the next piece of ho- Hollywood crap based on a PlayStation game. <laughs> Video game movies, yep. And oh, here's I- our roster. Uh, Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, Resident Evil, Final Fantasy. And they all suck. And you I like what- Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says, it's guilty pleasure. You know, the it's ironic. not very good, but how you know, ironic like, that you mentioned that when not too long ago, Ratchet and Clank. The trailer for Ratchet and Clank was released. Yeah. That yeah, actually it's... looks pretty good, and I like um, the games. Yeah, I've never played the game. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. No, I'm not. Okay, false alarm. Maybe. Um, somebody in the group said they were kind of torn because, like, uh, I forgot what they said. It was in the it was in the Animat fan club. I forget what they said, but they said they were torn whether it was gonna be good or bad. Honestly, like, I've never played the games, but I kind of have mixed feelings with it. It's like, it looks fantastic, but the writing, like, the style of humor they were going, at least in the trailer, is like, I don't know. Like, worst case scenario, I guess I'm just too scared if they're going to make another Escape from Planet Earth. And that's all I'm scared of. I have all three games, so I've known the gameplay and all the characters, so I'm not kind of excited for it. I'm looking for... Um, I, I have no opinion as of this point, I'm still looking for that uh, Sly Cooper movie. Yeah, that's gonna be <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be cool too. Uh, okay. Number eighteen. Oh, this is. Oh boy, I'm gonna have to do this. What is it? Oh. Casting director's misconception that the ad- the addition of bloated, insane Marlon Brando to a cast has brought a sense of class to any film since The Godfather. What? <laughs> what? Putting, f- putting fat people in movies, apparently. Oh. Really? And here's the picture they got them. Oh, that is sad. Well, Marlon Brando, Marlon Brando yeah, that really... Some- Oh my god. 
if I if I actually knew what to say without messing up and sounding weird, I would tear that up. Just saying. That's yeah, just. That's <laughs> just. Uh, to quote Chris Rock. People were wondering. Yeah, that's just the kind of is. Have you seen like you know like a lot of my own characters, my own OCs, my characters? I make them chubby because because they're wonderful. It's part of the character design, but. And they're yeah. so adorable. Like, well, the only example that I know from you is uh, the one that you drew for me of uh, Rose Quartz. Rose Quartz, yes. I love Rose Quartz. She's my spirit animal. Is she, is she like the ultimate mother in uh, Steven Universe? She was, yeah, she was Steven's mama, but oh. um, she was also like a huge fighter. Like she led this big rebellion. And then in order yeah, for her to have well. Steven, like she had to destroy her physical form. And now she's gone. Oh, Which makes it sad. They don't explain... They don't explain what happened to her, but... They'll, they'll What's probably... Kind of part they'll, of her they'll, mighty they'll, Steven. Something. They'll explain it along the way. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Back right. on topic. Here is the one you've all been waiting for. Da -da 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 -da. 19. Adam Sandler's cunning scheme of producing movies starring the even less funny Rob Schneider, thereby <laughs> making his own films look like Marx Brothers comedies in comparison. And, and and what year did this book did this magazine come out? Two thousand three. Two thousand and three. Well, not much has changed, has it? Yep. Oh, which by the way, coming. I think like in two months he's going to release the Ridiculous Six, and it will have Rob Schneider. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah. I'm kind of interested to see that. I don't know. Yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Rod Sh Rod Schneider during this this period was headlining such films as The Hot Chick, The Animal. The yeah. Animal, I I thought was actually pretty funny. You know, that's it it's dumb. our campy classic. I honestly, I was I remember I actually saw, what was it? Uh, Deuce Bigelow, European Jail. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> that was... It, it, that was... Oh. Really the first one oh, sucked. He, the second was even worse. Oh, God. Was, he was, that, the second was scary. That's the thing. He was... His career was played out by then. Nowadays, he he's actually still working, but he's headlining... Uh, as far as what he's headlining, it's direct to... It's direct to Netflix... Uh, Subpar animated films. Speaking That's of your. I should not be the one mentioning that, Matt. Uh, That's no. yours. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I know. Like he, he does. Like he is featured a lot in uh, like very low, like you said, subpar animated features, like The Reef. Yeah. And like the worst thing is, is that oh, those movies would advertise that it has Rob Schneider in it. I've, like, mm -hmm. I've, like, I've seen. I've seen crap like that in uh, like Walmart. And I'm like, oh my god! Exactly. I think he's got a new move, new anime movie coming out called Norm the yeah. North. Oh yeah. god! Ew! Ew! Um, ew! I even got Top Cat, and it's that like. It oh. says it, Rob Schneider on it. Yeah, I, that's right. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so lucky. Uh, he played the villain in that movie, but uh, when I reviewed it, I had like a completely different dub, so I didn't have Rob Schneider. Oh yeah, it was the other dub. Yeah, I got them. There's hmm. a thing with like yeah. I've got a like I've, there's a difference with me between bad live action movies and bad animated movies. Like bad live action, I'm like, it's like I kind of have like this so bad it's good attitude with it. With animation, I just want to cry. <laughs> yeah, because there's so many people working on it, and like so many people all put that... all this art into it, and it's just oh, I can't stand it. Well, I actually like top that uh, that top uh, cat top movie. Top. I don't. Yeah. Well, it depends on I... what dub you listen to. Hmm. Yeah, I heard the English one is bad, but the original Mexican one is not is not so bad. Hmm. I've only heard the English dub. The, vo the voice acting is okay, but what's really messed up is that they've got Jason Harris voicing like ten different characters. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, I, I I just felt like it. I was looking at it from this perspective. It carries, it carries what the what the series. Did it's true. Yeah. And they were trying to do if something. If you don't like the series, you're not going to like the movie. It's just weird how Mexico yeah. has, just has this fascination for Top Cat. It was just like, I didn't know that. Yeah, really. They, they've got, like, uh, 
apparently they, they have a new mo new Top Cat movie out. I've seen clips of it. The CGI looks better, but it's I don't know. Like like the I I didn't like the first Top Cat movie because the uh -oh. jokes didn't make sense. Uh oh, I might be off. Oh no, the villain was an idiot. Oh, there we go. <laughs> We're good. Okay. And last one for now, number twenty. The unpleasant, uneasy feeling guys experience as their testicles ascend firmly back into their bodies while being dragged to and forth to fit through yet another chick flick. What oh, the fuck? chick flicks, really? Should I leave? It's just, uh... <laughs> to be fair, there are some good chick flicks. I mean, like, there are the... good chick flicks. Out there. I was gonna say, there's no, there's good chick flicks now, but then back yeah, then, I, I wouldn't yeah. mind. Like, I wouldn't mind too much if I. If somehow I get a girlfriend and like she would drag me to see something like, the, like Mean Girls or My Big Fat Greek Wedding. I love Mean Girls. You we, know, we say. we actually we actually watched Mean Girls in like in language arts class. I like I Mean Girls. I love Mean but... Girls. Yeah, Mean Girls is good. It's, it, it's not a bad movie. Mean Girls is amazing. It had, it had some fun stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Oh. But when they when they say. When, when they say chick flick, though, they're they're thinking more like uh, I guess oh. along the lines of Nicholas Sparks and uh, those ones, you know, romantic, romantic drama, ones. not comedy. <laughs> well, d well, technically, well, I I guess it's more like the romance thing. Like technically, Mamma Mia would count. Yeah, I yeah. like Mamma Mia. Thank you very much. <laughs> the movie. So do I. Yeah. <laughs> the movie really? Hello. <laughs> They had like uh, it didn't it, it didn't make sense because all the uh, main characters in it are like. Oh, I remember that part. <laughs> I just had to. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> this is not what happens before a wedding. Go go within your emotion. You can dance. You can dance. <laughs> Uh, yeah, those chick right. flicks. There's, there's diff, there's dick flicks too. Dick flicks. Mm -hmm. There's dick flicks. <laughs> dick I don't flicks. watch. I don't watch dick flicks. <laughs> what, like Brokeback when... Mountain? <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Question, question, Mia. Uh, when, uh, when girls go see dick flicks, do they get the adverse reaction as opposed to you know guys having their testicles ascend? Do women have? What did I just start? Oh my god. In other words, Mia, how do you feel going to see The Expendables? Uh, I've never seen that. Okay. No, but, yeah. I don't know, if your man brings you to go see something oh, like Ian? The Expendables. Like if your boyfriend Ian took you oh, to like no. a guy movie. Um, I kind of just drag him wherever I want and he's okay with it. <laughs> he's my pet. Aww. <laughs> That's so cute. Funny I should say that. I know it's totally unrelated, but we're going to homecoming tomorrow. <laughs> oh, nice. Congratulations. Well, nice. Just saying, thank you. So You're exciting. welcome. <laughs> and you heard it first on Cinema Royale Cinema Lounge. <laughs> Mike, you alright there? He's dead. The kids are laughing. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh... Except just kind of wait till the timer runs out. <laughs> okay, How much time we well... got left? Wow. What was just that G up there? Hmm? Oh, nothing. I thought I saw it. <laughs> A G, a G, G what? A G. A G? A G. If, as in Stop goosebumps? Stop G. As in oh. goosebumps? <laughs> there you go. They're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I'm such an uncultured swine. Yes, what are you looking at, you hockey puck? Technically, uh, <laughs> go, ghost, Goosebumps, the movie came out, so I just figured I'd get that. Yeah, I, saw, I was at Comic-Con today, and I, I saw the panel for it. Hmm. It actually, it, it actually looks, it actually looks like a fun movie. I heard, I saw the decent reviews, and I saw, I was there, like, huh, how about that? Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna All have right. to 
I was Sorry. honestly, I was like surprised. Like, it, it, like the reviews aren't like spectacular. They were just like, I, I guess like all the critics are like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a good, uh, fun, scary movie to take your kids. <laughs> Spooky. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Spooky. You have to love Jack Black anytime that you see him in, in something. It doesn't matter the quality of the production. He's just fully devoted to having fun in the role. Yeah, yeah he, he, he was the best part of Orange County and uh, NeverEnding Story 3. Okay, but Gulliver's Travels mm -hmm. comes to mind. I don't know about you. Wasn't that, like, terrible? Oh. Yeah, I my heard... dad saw it. And... <laughs> It's the same director too. Yeah. I know Gulliver's. I know Harold Ramis did uh, Year One, which I saw. It wasn't a terrible movie, uh, but it was like the, the scenes where he's eating shit and stuff like that was just stupid. What? <laughs> Gentlemen, eat shit. What? <laughs> Go watch Year right. One if you want to see that. <laughs> I'm it's not into that. I'm sorry, sorry but I'm not I into not, Bukaki. I do not have a fascination with fecal matter. I'm sorry, but I do not. It's just nobody so does. Bad. Nobody does. All right, so <clears throat> let's get into the podcast now. In. I'm scared. Wait, James says. Hey, you through this one. What? You already went through the practice round. Oh, you did, really? You did the warm-up just fine. Yeah. I did? Oh my god, I did? Yeah, we I went through it. Yeah. Yeah. Yay! I'm still mm -hmm. waiting for freaking Jaws 19, so where's that prediction? Did you see, <laughs> did you see the trailer? Yes! We've, that's we've actually... Ar that's we've, a already got, we've already got, like, four Sharknado movies. They'll probably just, uh... That Rename Sharknado 4 to Jaws 19. I don't know how I feel about Fifty Shades of Shark, but... What the fuck? Yes! <laughs> yes, the furries. Uh, Can't be a I don't furry, know, that shark doesn't have fur. Might as well no, no, well, well, there are you some fish. Gonna be? No, you, I, I, you know what it's gonna be? It's gonna be like Anastasia, or I, I think that's her name, being yeah. like, being like, doing the BDSM and her partner is the left shark from the Super Bowl. <laughs> And then the oh, spectrum comes no. in. Let's see for uh, uh let's see for the for for critter for the uh woodland critters we got the furries for lizards we got scalies uh for for whales and shit. Um, why don't we call them blubbies? Fishies. Yeah. Let's call them blubbies. Blubbies. That works. <laughs> blubbies. <laughs> All right. I can imagine Blubbies walking around, they see a nice booty, they go... Ooh. <laughs> 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 it's me every day! <laughs>